Thank you very much. Um, yeah, we're here today to present our research uh, around 2FA bypass, and we're calling it Smishmash because it's really a mix of techniques. And it's called text-based 2FA spoofing using OSINT, phishing techniques, and a burner phone. And our burner phones, we brought them? Yeah, yeah. we brought a old Sony Ericsson and a Nokia N900, uh, old hacker phone, as you all know. Uh, but unfortunately, you're such way ahead in the phone service that you have disabled 2G and 3G, so they don't <laughs> work here. So we'll have to do the demos uh, during other means, but you have to take our word for it. They work really well in Sweden. In Europe. In Europe, they work really well. <laughs> but, and we didn't have time to buy any more modern burner phones. But uh, the, the idea is the same, and the demos will work the same on, on modern hardware. Um, so yeah, about us, uh, I'm Thomas Olofsson. Uh, I've been working with security for a long, long time. Uh, I'm also the founder of SecT.org, a Swedish security conference running yearly. Um, I used to play CTFs back in the good old days. I actually managed to win the DEF CON CTF back in the, way back in the day, so it barely counts anymore, before it became this big and complicated and hard to win. Um, I'm into secure coding and secure development, and except for doing hacking and IT stuff, uh, I like climbing, diving, and motorcycles, really safe sports, actually. Uh, Michael. Yeah, and hi, everyone. I'm Mike, uh, a hacker and also a co-founder of FIO, uh, also a lock picker and a collector of uh, Intel. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, basically this talk, if you don't want to attend the whole talk, I'm going to start with, with our conclusions. Uh, so, and the conclusions are basically text messages, SMS for two-factor authentication is broken. Uh, and this is no news for a lot of us. I, I worked in the telco industry, and this is no news. It's been broken since the inception of text messages. It was never intended to be used anything like this. And we have been spoofing text messages for as long as we've been hacking. And, and Michael has some good stories about, actually. Yeah, I have some great examples of a colleague that was uh, abroad, and he received a text message from the local police that he had fraudulent charges on his card. Uh, so he called them up. But of course, the local police doesn't send text messages when you get fraudulent <laughs> charges. So, so these techniques have been working for years. It's just now that we're seeing the, the like mainstream adoption of, of weaponization of this, but, but the actual hacking techniques have always been there. Um, so a bit of se setting the scene. The last couple of years, it started in like, you saw some data about in 2016, 17, but, but then it's just been escalating where you see it in the media, in the computer media, with very little details about how to do it. It's like, well, account takeover via phishing, smishing, and they're bypassing the 2FA. So we were interested and in like, oh, and they emptied the account, they stole all the data or the bitcoins or the NFTs, because this has been predominantly active in the crypto space, as you can imagine. Um, so we wanted to research how are they doing this? What's the modus operandi? How did they do it? And like, what do you actually need to facilitate these attacks? Uh, and can we reproduce it in a, like, in a good way? And also, at the end of the talk, we're going to get to how do you actually protect against this and what can you do to change it. So the first hack was, uh, that, that got main media attention was the Outlook bypass a couple of years ago. But that one, when we researched, it was actually a misconfiguration or open port where you could actually, on the exchange servers, go in and change the two-factor authentication settings. So th that one doesn't really count uh, into this I mean, it is a 2FA bypass, but you're actually hacking the Outlook server to more or less switch off the 2FA, which I think is cheating, because then it's not actually 2FA bypass. It's more misconfiguration or vulnerability. But if you look at the more modern hacks, we have like crypto.com. All the modern crypto exchanges, for instance, have been attacked uh, during the last couple of years uh, and like lost millions and millions and millions of this. Um, so we looked at some of these attacks. And the smishing trends are, I'm, I know th there is discussions on Twitter, like why do we need another word smishing for this? And I sort of agree, but it is its own thing. So I, I sort of object there. I think smishing is very different from phishing because most of the phishing protection mechanisms that we have only work for email and your built-in browser. It doesn't actually work from apps if you're 
in, in like Telegram or Signal, all of these links actually get to you uh, totally unchecked. Um, and what we've seen statistically, according to some research, which is not our own, but like we've seen a huge increase in the number of smishing links sent in the last year. How many of you have got an unsolicited text message in the last couple of weeks? Yeah, it's like I, I get now 10, at least 10 a week. Uh, and the reason for that is that your phone numbers are increasingly being leaked on the leak files, and the attackers are starting to exploit that. And it's actually very hard to verify the integrity uh, of the sender of these messages because, and, th and this actually leads to up to 35% of the people targeted actually don't even understand that the targeting uh, was smishing attack. So for some reason, the text message still has a higher implicit trust than emails, especially by the, the older user base, because it's like, no, I got the text message from the police, like in Michael Sorry, it's like, no, I need to call the police because the police texted this to me. But where we all know you can spoof emails and there you get hundreds of spam emails, and we're now getting to that point. But the market is not saturated yet, so you still have a higher trust, and that's why these attacks have a much higher success rate, uh, and that's why we're seeing such an increase in them. Uh, also contributing to this, which we'll show in demos, is the mobile browser functionality, which actually plays into the hands of the attacker. Oh, and that brings us to the internal source of leaked user data that just keeps rolling and rolling and rolling. We had the Twitter leak uh, last week, uh, which we haven't indexed yet. We have the sample files. We have the phone numbers from there. So the, f the number of oh, like leaked phone numbers are just exploding. And also, on my way here, I had to, to check in on American Airlines to get my boarding pass. I had to put in my phone number, not only my email. I also need my phone number now to actually get a boarding pass. So there's more and more leaked phone numbers coming out, which is really Michael's forte. Yeah, so what we have done is uh, everyone knows uh, all the regular hacker forums and breach forums uh, where, where they leak these credentials and phone numbers. Uh, and it's both on ClearNet websites and it's also on the darknet. Uh, we can combine them together into a elastic search where it's easily searched. We also have been collecting from ransomware sites that has increased recently as well. So how, do, here, how yeah. do these uh, forums work for you? Yeah, here we have an example of a site where they post leaked credentials. Uh, usually they all work the same. You need points to download the shit. Uh, and you get points by either shit posting or posting your own leaks or paying. Um, and, and most of the leaks that are available on Have I Been Pwned, etc., are publicly available on these sites, basically for free. Yeah, they're always located somewhere. Uh, and then we have the, the leak files. And this is just a screenshot from today, because we like to be up to date. So these are this, the companies that you can download today. Uh, yeah, from this is a ransomware site where it shows uh, what companies have chosen not to pay. Good work of them. <laughs> Um, and, and, then the, the, and then when we were doing this research, we actually got so much spam, like, do you want to buy the attendee list of Black Hat 2022? Uh, so we actually had to do that. So we actually bought that list and indexed that one as well as part of the research. How much did it cost? Uh, and we, we got it below $100. If we, were, like, if we were texting back and forth with these guys, we got below $100 to buy all the attendee list of Black Hat 2022. Uh, so we indexed that in our data set for this research as well. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, and here you can see some of the leaked credentials that we have imported into a Elasticsearch. Uh, it's around 500 million right now. Uh, and we're going to release this data later uh, for you. It's actually live now, the 500 million that we have indexed. Yeah. Um, and we, we have found credentials of more than a billion leaked phone numbers. We haven't actually had time to index all of them because it takes a long while and the data is very unstructured in yeah. some ways. So basically, all your numbers are belong to us. So you, do you want to see a demo of this that we can actually get some phone numbers and tie them to email? So let's do let's a demo. Let's switch place. He has a better Unix beard than me, that's why. Yeah, so let's start by searching for our 
lovely CEO that's here in the crowd. Uh, he's always a good target to search. He's in all breaches. We don't import the breach. If Brian is not part of the breach, it's not worth importing. Yeah. So, so we see here that Brian exists in, in three dump files, Peter Data Labs, uh, LinkedIn, the LinkedIn scrape, and Drizzly.com. So, and we can also search by phone number. And this is actually Brian's real phone number, so, so you can call him if you want to. Uh, yeah, please do. And then we can also do the reverse search. We can search for Brian's phone number and see which other leaks he has registered under other email addresses. Uh, so this is real data, uh, and it's actually really scary. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, we, and we are actually making available uh, like a test site where you can actually see if your data has been leaked, your phone numbers has been leaked. I know have I been pawned are starting to import as well, but we've done uh, quite a lot of import and we're going to publish the links later. Yeah, they come in the end of the slides. Back to the presentation, I guess. What do we have? Um, so basically, while we thought a credential set used to be just yes, username, password, slash hash, that's what we thought about as lead credential. What we're doing now is like saying that, well, actually, if you have username, password, and telephone, username, cracked password, and your telephone numbers, you have a good chance to actually use that information to bypass 2FA. Because a lot of uh, the, the 2FA solutions only allow text messages. Some of the banks in the US, I've heard, only allow text-based uh, 2FA. You can't have TOTP or any more secure devices. So in a lot of places, you don't have any choice. Um, so basically what this means, we have indexed uh, a total, you have numbers down here, 4.8 billion unique email password combinations. And we have 524 indexed phone numbers. We're, we're close to a billion, which means that we can tie one of five, every five, one in every five email addresses to a valid phone number. Uh, so that's how broad the attack spectrum is for the adversaries if you do this. Um, so we, we looked at some of these attacks. Uh, we're going to be fairly quick of this. And, and the official response is, yeah, we've seen a small number of users reporting suspicious activity. Uh, but we will be pausing withdrawals. So that means it's not a small number because it's a lot of people because they're losing a lot of money. And this attack, they lost, uh, Crypto.com lost 34.6 million uh, from several hundred accounts. And our research indicates, yes, they were targeted because they had a lot of leak credentials. So the, the users are targeted because they have leaked credentials and leaked phone numbers. And leaked phone numbers is important because that's why you can bypass the 2FA. Uh, similar with OpenSea. Uh, OpenSea reported multiple attacks because NFTs are super, super popular last year. Um, they, you can buy a pixelated monkey for like millions. Uh, so, so for some reason, kids had like millions worth of pixelated monkeys that people wanted to steal. <laughs> so. Phishing and smishing attacks in this area is rife. Uh, so basically what they did, they, they did is, uh, uh, found people's phone numbers, actually did a smishing attack and saying like, hey, we upgraded our contract, so you keep your pixelated monkey safe, you need to upgrade the contract and transfer them to the, to the new contract. And, and actually they copied word by word, uh, mail from OpenSea, but they pointed the contract, they executed a transfer of all their NFTs into the adversary's uh, wallets. Um, oh, and while we're doing this research, this happened. Last week, they were also breached and had all their contact and emails leaked. Yeah, it was a third party, so it was not, it was not a breach for themselves. But in general, we are seeing a lot of breach. And looking at this attack, for instance, Coinbase says, in order to access your account, these third parties needed prior knowledge of your email address, password, and your phone number. Uh, and that's basically what we're saying here. Yeah, we can get that for one out of five people. Uh, however, in that incident, they also took, uh, exploited some vulnerabilities during the account recovery process. And this is the most common way of fooling 2FA. It's actually to initiate uh, a re password reset and then uh, fool the device. And Demo very soon. 
So account recovery, uh, on the, we, we looked at like five or six different attacks. Two or three of them were account recovery. The number two was SMS injection, where you initiate a login, and you, you, some sites, I mean, you can log in do basic functionality with just username and password, but if you want to do a transfer, then you need 2FA. So what the attackers are doing then is that they're initiating a transfer, then sending an SMS to the, the perpetrator saying like, hey, we can demo this. There is something wrong with your account. Input your credentials. And doing a man in the middle attack. Um, and this is also very common now that you have these attack combining smishing with adversary in the middle proxies. So you're actually getting the real credentials as the people input them. Um, and number four, which we're not going to talk too much about here, but another common way uh, is uh, SIM jacking or SIM cloning or SIM porting. Basically, Michael. Yeah, well, it's very common here in the States, at least, that uh, you social engineer the telephone companies to switch their accounts to another SIM card. Or you can go in and buy with a false ID and say, like, hey, I want to buy a new subscription for uh, Verizon. Can you port over my number yeah. from this other Don't provider? Don't recommend you doing that. But it, it, it's been known to happen. Uh, but in general, the account recovery process is very laxed, and this is actually my account. So if I go in and try to do account recovery on myself on Google, and remember, Google has the most tested, well-known process for account recovery of everyone in the world because they have the most users. But even them, I think, is a bit laxed. You give away like the ending of my phone number to other of my email addresses. This is giving away a, a lot of data if I also have the dump funds. Um, but yeah, let's talk in general about text messages. Text messages was invite, invented like in 1984 as part of the GSM specification. Uh, and it, the first text was sent in 1992 and said, Merry Christmas. And I did, for originally it was like they had padding left in the data packets because of like alignment bugs. So they had a couple of characters left. So some engineer there said, what can we do with this? Oh, we can put in seven bit ASCII and we can encode it on the line and run it over the network, and then text messaging was basically born. It was never intended to be a security protocol at all. Literally, there is no verification of anything except it being 7-bit ASCII. There is no sender verification, there is no checksums, there, there is no nothing. It's just like 7-bit ASCII encoded on the line and then pulled up uh, by the broadband chip and displayed. Um, so getting a, a telegram from or, or a text message from Santa Claus is as valid, according to the specifications, as one from a phone number. And that's why we, what we see now, uh, that we are getting all these text messages from like Verizon, or you're getting these text messages from, that's like not intended, but that's how the protocol is used. So there's a couple of ways to send text messages, manually via your phone, duh. Uh, but then through modem and old phones, which we're, we're going to demonstrate here, but it's good because we're not going to have time for that demo anyway, but you have to trust us. You can just plug in a USB cable, write 80, some 80 commands, transpose it to send bit ASCII and send it off. Um, or you can use an API service. So that's what we're going to demo now, uh, the spoofing. Okay. Let's see. Start another one. It's green recording. Come on. Okay. This worked a second ago. See. Otherwise, we have videos, but that's boring. And cameras, we have new movie recording. Restart the quick time. Okay. This is always the thing with live demos, huh? Five. Ooh. 
Look at us. Sweet. <laughs> Close up. Mm -hmm. Not working. Okay. No. There we go. Fantastic. Let's go. I hope it works. Uh, so what we're seeing here is the, the point of the attack from the adversary where we're seeing the phone to the left, which is my actual normal phone. Uh, and then we have some scripts that are going to use API providers. We actually got blocked, uh, not for spoofing the SMS because that's totally okay. We got blocked because some of the payloads that we're sending um, were bad uh, by some providers. So we just switched to another. There's literally hundreds of providers out there uh, where you can... Uh, Let's see. Is the cable bad now? No. Yeah. It's not showing up on screen. So I got the text message here from Binance. Let's see if it shows up again. Let's try it again. And change. Close up. Okay, bad cable. Um, so <laughs> you just have to watch the video then, unfortunately. Use this one. Use this one. Try, try. And we're going to try one cable for you to see this, otherwise we're going to have to go to the videos of the demos. Bye. Human recording. Come on. Yes. New cable. Finance. New text message. So I click on, on the Binance text, and I face ID. I use my passcode. Um, and what we're seeing here, if you select the window here, is this is actually inside my nor I do have a Binance account. Uh, and this is the real Binance account where uh, they're say, sending my verification code. You're requesting a transfer. If this was not you, uh, please be aware of uh, spam calls and SMS phishing. So obviously we're doing the same. We're copying their text uh, and basically saying your account is blocked due to suspicious activity. Uh, to unlock this phone and, or your account, please go here. Uh, and obviously the domain name would not be demo.smishmash.net. Um, and we're not going to do Binance. We have set up our own crypto uh, exchange.com. Don't sue us. Don't, so, so we don't get sued live, because it would be bad to do this on. Um, so crypto exchange, this is my email. And look, here, uh, there is a, a code. And this is actually from the real uh, SMS that comes from Binance, because we're also initiating a, a login or a transfer. And boom, just fill it and hit next. And we're not really. And here, um, we hit next, and we redirected to, in this case, crypto.com, uh, because th this goes for all of them. And it, on the adversary side, we actually get the username and the token, as well as the session tokens, uh, to actually log in and, and complete the transfer. And as you see, it's actually very hard to spot on the phone that you're actually being man in the middle attacked and phished. Um, and the, the thing is that the text messages actually like shows up. And here, actually, we, we have another script, so we're actually texting <laughs> the, the credentials to talking. ourselves as well via texting uh, from Fio, uh, which is our company. Because, you, yeah, you can send text from anything. So that's, um, and you can also do this for Google. Um, we have some sample for Google, I think. Yeah. Auth message from Google, because they actually say auth message from Google. And it shows up in my normal auth messages. Coinbase is using the same short code. Suspicious activity at your account. Please verify your credentials. Yeah, I'm going to do Always that. Always click. Always click links. these links. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, and if the internet is quicker here, you're going to see what's happening. Now the internet is not super fast. 
Um, but we are getting the requests eventually, as you can see from the adversary point of view. But uh, it's loading, maybe. It's on the way. Is it? Should be. Mm -hmm. Come on. Let me click on it again. Binance. What was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cannot write TLS response from under middle client. Okay. So um, we might have to show Try the, the, the recorded. Again. Sorry. Click again. <laughs> click again. Uh, so they don't. But they they work really well before uh, this morning. <laughs> uh, so we're blaming network speeds. Actually, I would say. Um, Accountsgofishing.com. But yeah. Let's do the video. Then. Yeah, do the video of that one. Slask. Why am I screen recording? Yeah, yeah. You don't want to. Oh, uh, okay. Now, yes, because I'm doing that. We, it is low speeds. So basically, what would happen if we had the faster speed here? The actual. Prefill would actually overlay uh, the, the bar if you show the phone again. Uh, so, what's happening here is that my pre filled credentials to log in to Google. Uh, no, it didn't work. <laughs> will actually uh, over, uh, overlay uh, the bar. So, I'm going to use Black Cat and go find no, it. And my Google verification code, it's very small here, actually gets pre filled. Let's stop and file. You move recording. So, my, what's happening here is that my uh, credentials from Google, and these are the real credentials, actually get pre filled in the enter code, even though I'm going to a man in the middle site and not the intended site, because they come from the same source, which were spoofed. So I now log in, and now we're going to get an error because I'm, I'm redirected to .sc domain, which I don't have a certificate for for this demo. But as you see here, uh, we have the token uh, already uh, on the adversary side. So I'm logged into my Google account without, with the real 2FA codes, with the man in the middle of the proxy. So yeah, sorry about the demos. There were a bit of ca cables and slow internet. But that's the idea, and that's how people are doing it. You inject yourself into the SMS stream. Um, and then we found, if you're doing this professionally, if you're like big time adversary, you don't have crappy codes, and then you go into your famous uh, Chinese site, and you buy the hardware. For like 160 bucks, you can buy a custom hardware that does all this SMS spoofing for you. Uh, and you can even buy bigger rigs, like, like going large scale with these attacks, uh, where you can slot in like 64 SIM cards in parallel and just brute force these away. Um, and funnily enough, they're actually marketed by like, you can also, from 80 commands, change the EMIE number, which is like the hardware number where you're sending from, so you totally can't be tracked. And you can also send the SMSC sender to whatever you like on these devices. And this you can just order off of eBay or Chinese eBay. Um, and funnily enough, at some of them, they actually have in the marketing materials. Look at that screenshot. They're actually marketing them <laughs> with like, here's your Google authentication code. So, so this is sort of a, a well-known secret that, that this is possible. It's not like no one's heard of this. They're actually marketing them this way. So the idea that we just showed is that we have a fished user, uh, adversary in the middle, and TLS uh, set up, but 
we can still uh, do this. So, okay, uh, we're over time, uh, but I'm just going to say some closing remarks uh, of protection against this. We have seen a couple of the really targeted side protecting against this. Uh, there are several ways. Recaptcha seems to be the most common because there you can set a cookie from which site the recaptcha can come. Uh, so you know, at least you as a user will see this uh, if you're on the middle, middle site, that there's an error in recaptcha. Some sites are protecting with CloudFront cookies. You can do a similar way. And you could protect, most likely, with cores. We're doing uh, some experimentation with this, with setting up the core headers correctly between the API servers. Everyone used to just course star, like everywhere. Everyone's like, yeah, course, yeah, that's fine. But you could protect against these type of man in middle attacks by doing correct core setups. So there is ways to protect against these attacks. So uh, we're fully releasing all the research data that we've done on this uh, under an S3 bucket. Uh, so you just have to take a picture of this slide um, because that was the best we could think of. Uh, because we wanted to release it as, as soon or as late as possible to get as much data as possible into this dump file. The dump file is about 50, 60 gigs. Uh, so that's why we put it on S3 bucket because it, it's and a lot. And phone numbers and emails are hashed in that one. So, so it's SHA-1 SHA hashed, so you can actually you can search yourself. So the key takeaways from this, one in five email accounts can be tied to a valid phone number. SMS has no built-in security and can be spoofed. It's hard to spot fake sites on the mobile because the mobile actually hides the, the bar of where you're going. Uh, and the mobile will automatically fill the TOFA tokens, the correct ones, to help you. OK, thank you, guys. We had to get ready for the next briefing. But thank you, guys, for attending. Thank you.